was William Shakespeare? Author of the most celebrated works ever composed in English, our most famous writer lived a life that is shrouded in mystery. In fact, questions about the author's identity have been around as long as the plays themselves. Will was born in the rural village of Stratford-upon-Avon to illiterate parents, but through hard work and innate genius, produced masterpieces such as Hamlet and Macbeth. Or at least that's how the story goes. In fact, some of history's greatest thinkers have been convinced that the man from Stratford-upon-Avon was not actually the writer of Shakespeare's plays. Mark Twain, Sigmund Freud, Walt Whitman, and Vladimir Nabokov are just some of those who believe that William Shakespeare was actually the secret pen name of an Elizabethan nobleman. Here's an overview of the case for Edward de Vere, the 17th Earl of Oxford, having written the works of William Shakespeare. Let's begin by examining the man from Stratford and some of the reasons people have questioned whether he could have written Shakespeare's plays. What you're looking at right now is in fact the entirety of the physical writing that we have from Will of Stratford. Just these six scrawly signatures, nearly all of which are spelled differently, and none of which are spelled shake hyphen spear like in Shakespeare's debut publications. Beyond these signatures, we have nothing. No drafts of plays, no diary, no letters of correspondence to or from him, and his will indicates that he owned no books. Here are some contemporary writer's signatures for comparison. Just like today, literate people would develop a standardized John Hancock. We know for a fact that Will of Stratford's parents were illiterate, as were his brother and even his children. In fact, the vast majority of people in a small town like Stratford-upon-Avon would have been illiterate in Will's time, and even business people, like Will's family, often could only sign their names. Though many biographies of Shakespeare will speculate that Will attended the grammar school in Stratford-upon-Avon, there's actually no evidence to support this, and as the eldest son of a working-class family, it's highly likely that Will would have gone straight into the family business. There's a lot of documentation supporting Will's business dealings throughout his life. He's buying and selling grain, various shareholdings and lawsuits, but there's virtually no first-hand witnesses describing a playwright named Will Shakespeare writing plays, attending rehearsals, or socializing with other theater professionals. Imagine going to Vienna in the 18th century when Mozart is taking the musical world by storm, but nobody in all of Vienna ever seems to have met him. That's the situation with William Shakespeare. Despite the wild popularity of his plays during the 1590s, the author himself seems to have been Mr. Nobody. By the late 19th century, many of the world's most celebrated intellectuals were in agreement that the man from Stratford could not have been the true author of the plays, and that William Shakespeare had to be a pen name, similar to how Samuel Clemens was the legal name of Mark Twain. Twain even wrote a book called Is Shakespeare Dead, describing the Stratford man's biography as, quote, made of guesses, inferences, theories, conjectures, an Eiffel Tower of artificialities. Henry James even described Will's authorship claim as, quote, the biggest and most successful fraud ever. However, the identity of the true author remained unclear until the 1920 publication of J.T. Loney's Shakespeare Identified in Edward de Vere, the 17th Earl of Oxford. Loney had embarked upon a historical manhunt for the true writer of Shakespeare's plays, searching for the person whose education, biography, temperament, reputation, and life experiences could match the plays where the Stratford man failed to. De Vere had been praised by his contemporaries as the greatest living writer of comedies, and yet no plays existed that had been signed with his name. De Vere's extraordinary classical education mapped perfectly onto the source texts most drawn upon by Shakespeare, such as Ovid's Metamorphosis, which was translated in De Vere's childhood home, or Beowulf, referenced in Hamlet, the only known copy of which was owned by De Vere's tutor. Shakespeare had also possessed local knowledge of multiple Italian cities likely only accessible to somebody who had visited them. It strained plausibility that Will, who never left England, would have known things like what paintings were on the wall of the Ducal Palace in Mantua, or the specifics of water passage in Verona and Milan. Edward de Vere had traveled widely in Italy and had a public reputation as the Italianate Englishman. Furthermore, it had long been acknowledged by scholars that Polonius and Hamlet was an intimately drawn satire of William Cecil, Queen Elizabeth's chief advisor. Polonius offers long-winded advice to his son Laertes upon the son's departure for France, similar to a letter Cecil wrote to his son Thomas upon Thomas's departure for France. Though it was odd that a young man from Stratford-upon-Avon would poke fun at the domestic affairs of a powerful government official, Edward de Vere had in fact been Cecil's son-in-law and had grown up in his house as a ward. So why wouldn't Edward de Vere have signed his plays under his real name? There are a number of reasons. The first and the simplest is the taboo against members of the aristocracy writing for the public stage. Feudal law prevented nobility from accepting money for commoners' works, the consequence being you would lose your social rank. Secondly, Shakespeare's plays were actually highly controversial and critical of powerful people in the Elizabethan government. For example, the famous Machiavellian crookback Richard III was more than just a history play. 
In its time, it was a pointed critique of the conniving and hunchbacked Robert Cecil, another of De Vere's brother-in-laws, who was at the time rising through the ranks of Elizabeth's advisors and angling to choose the next king. Despite our romanticized notion of a golden era, the Elizabethan period was actually a terrifying place to be a writer. The emergence of both the public theater and the printing press had ushered in an unprecedented crackdown on freedom of speech, with a massive government-run censorship network that could have you imprisoned, tortured, or killed. Christopher Marlowe was assassinated by the government at age 29. Ben Jonson was imprisoned and interrogated multiple times. But there's no record suggesting that the mystery man William Shakespeare ever got himself into trouble. Remember how none of the Stratford man's signature had a hyphen in them, but the earliest uses of Shakespeare's pen name did? Nearly every writer used a pseudonym at some point during this period. Hyphens were one of the signifiers that somebody was using a pen name and not their real name, such as Martin Marr Prelate, Cuthbert Connie Catcher, or Simon Smellnave. It's similar today to how people make up funny names for anonymous social media accounts. William Shakespeare. Kinda sounds like someone who was wielding a mighty pen to speak the truth. Like and subscribe for more facts about Edward de Vere, the 17th Earl of Oxford, and to learn more about the Oxfordian case for Shakespeare authorship.